Hello. My name is Roland. Today I want to talk to you about um, about life. We have a temporal life. Call it a temporary life if you want to. It's it's a life that we inherit from our parents. And it is good, this temporary life. It gives us time to discover what we need to know to find eternal life. And so we have this temporary life which was given to us. You see, it all began before you were born. Now, your life, the life for humans, has two origins. We have the temporary life, which we inherit from our parents. And it is centered in the, the earth and centered in the material creation. And it is subject to the material creation and relies upon and is dependent upon the material creation. But there's another life, the life from God. And this life from God comes to us through the soul, the sincere soul, the seeking soul, the soul that yearns for God, and the soul that finds God and remains close to God. And this eternal life goes on forever, begins in God and continues, and we participate in it. But the problem is that most of us are separated from this life from God. We are separated. We're born separated. But then as time goes by, we become more separated. Now, in a sense, you could say that we have a... We, when we're born, we're born separated, but it, that it's good. You could say that it's good. Why? Because then we can find God. So you have yet to find him. And so you can find him. See, that is good. And when you do find him, then you also find eternal life. Eternal life is knowing God and living in God, and God living through, well, I was going to say through you. He doesn't live through you, but he, his life, his breath, his love. See, you can feel within you. Now, God gave us this beautiful emerald isle, this earth, this beautiful beautiful place and he gave us our temporal life first of all he made it possible for us to become united with him again he made that possible and that is what Christ did and then he has always left clues through the prophets and through the apostles and through people here and there who, um, who speak um, inspired, really. There are clues. And he left us the Bible. Okay? It's a remarkable book. It's remarkable that it's still around for various reasons. And so we have that. And 
So those are the clues. But now, these clues are only useful if you can discover them and, and understand, realize them, and follow them. For example, think of a detective story, Agatha Christie or Columbo or some detective story. Some clues are left. But a monkey or a cat or a dog looking at the clues can't figure them out. Some people can't figure them out either, but some can. Columbo, Agatha Christie, whoever you want to choose as your favorite detective, okay, they can figure them out. The Hardy Boys, they can figure them out, figure out the clues. But it's fun. It's fun to figure them out. Well, there are a lot of clues have been left. And how, how are you going to be the good detective? You're not a monkey. But if you live, but if you live the fallen life without searching, and, and if you disregard the precious gift that you've been given, I'll tell you about that in just a moment, then you are just, might as well be a monkey. You know, if you just, um, if you live on a very low plane, which, um, which means eating and drinking, and, uh, and and an even lower plane is just studying all the time, listening to what other people say and what they write, and and just going round and round with that stuff. Because it's a substitute for for the gift. So, you were given this gift at birth. So clues have been left. Now you have to decipher the clues and solve the mystery and find eternal life. That's what it's all about. It's like Raiders of the Lost Ark. That was a very nice movie. Something like Raiders of the Lost Ark. You have to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Find the missing, see, something. You find eternal life. Well, Um, what is this gift of which I speak? When I say it, you're, gonna, you're not going to, unless you've been list, you know, following me and you've, you're al al along the path, along the path of true enlightenment, then you'll know immediately what I mean. You may have already guessed it, but otherwise when I say it, you'll think, well, that's nothing. You know what the gift was? This great gift. Intuition what you know in your heart. It's a marvelous, marvelous thing. It permits you, your soul, to actually see, to discern, to realize, to intuit in God's light. When you were a little child, I've said this so many times, but I keep saying it because there are always new listeners and new viewers and and also people that have been listening to me for years and they didn't haven't gotten it. Maybe you maybe this time you'll get it. When you were a little child, if there was some an injustice, one child was being treated better than another child, or one child was given more than another child. You saw it. You saw the injustice. No one had to teach you. You didn't have to go to school. You didn't have to read a book. You just saw. And when things were amiss somehow, people, so kids weren't behaving properly. They were doing bad things when their parents weren't around or teachers weren't around. You saw it. You saw that what they were doing wasn't right. Maybe you couldn't put words on it. You couldn't describe it. You couldn't verbalize it, conceptualize it, but you saw it. You saw there was something amiss. Or at home, your mom was angry. Your mom was angry at your dad all the time. And your dad, decent guy, but he didn't save much. Somehow she was in charge. It sh he should have been in charge. He was dad, but he wasn't. He just sat there. Something was amiss. You sensed it. You, you, 
you may not, you can't put, couldn't put words on it, but you saw that something was amiss. And then on the other hand, when you saw something that was beautiful, or you heard something beautiful, you heard about love, maybe in reading fairy tales, or when you heard the story of the birth of Jesus, you knew there was some something good there. You knew it. And you knew there were good people and bad people. You knew it. No one had to tell you. You saw it. It's your intuition. It's a gift from God. Now this, this intuition is the way that you can go through life and, and live properly and go through life and discover the clues. That's right. Discover the clues. Understand the clues. Realize the clues. Not what other people say. Not what other people say that they mean. But you see what they mean yourself. That's what your intuition will help you to do. To find your way back to the, the creator of your intuition. The, giver, the, the one who gave you life. The one who created this beautiful emerald isle upon which we live. This beautiful earth. God created it. It's a jewel of creation. And human beings were meant to be the jewel, also the jewel of creation, more so than the earth. The, the humans were the jewel and in a beautiful setting, in paradise, on this beautiful earth. Okay? So now you must find the clues. So you must, so that means you have to get back in touch with your intuition. Your intuition is in very important. See, your intuition is very important. You have to know whether to turn right or left. In some delicate moment with your partner or with your child, you, you need to ha be able to say just the right thing if something needs to be said or if nothing needs to be said to not say anything. You need to have that delicate, delicate guidance, that just-in-time guidance. That's what you get from intuition. And you hear so many things do this and do that, they say. The experts say you should do this or follow this program or do do that protocol or this or something. How are you going to know? You have to use your intuition, common sense. See? So you have intuition and you have life and you have this beautiful earth and you have time. That's all you need. Find your Creator. Find the purpose for your existence. Okay? You can begin right now. So the first thing that you will see with your intuition, you listen to me, you know that what I'm saying is true. You sense that what I'm saying is right. How do you know that what I'm saying is true? How do you know that what I'm saying is right? How do you know? Because of your intuition. It's quietly saying yes. It quietly testifies. See, to what I'm saying. Within. That is your lodestar. That is your gift. That's your most precious gift right there. See? Because with it, you can discern what's true. So, um, so if you have your intuition active because you want it to be, then you will begin to see a couple of things. The first thing that you will see is that you are too, that you are lost in your imagination. You're lost in thinking, the thinking process. You're lost in daydreams and pipe dreams and planning and scheming and reliving the past and rehearsing and studying. See, you're lost there. And you will, you also can sense that the truth is not there. That somehow you have to get outside of thoughts. Not that thoughts are wrong. Not that it's wrong to think. See, intuition becomes thinking. But the way you are now, you're cut off from your intuition and your thinking comes from 
reacting to the outside and absorbing from the outside and following people on the outside and following thoughts that arise from who knows where that mis always mislead you. So your thinking now is externalized and, and uh, not so good. What you need is, if you, have, if you do think, it should, be, it should be an extension of your intuition. Like Einstein, for example. Like Einstein, for example. He loved his intuition. He, in fact, he said in his writings, he said that intuition was the most important thing. That's, with his intuition, he, he, he sensed some things. He, and he searched for answers, and he discovered the answers. He didn't make them up. He didn't invent them. He discovered them with his intuition. He had a sixth sense, and he trusted it. He didn't doubt it. They said he was unbudgeable. Someone created a word to describe Albert Einstein. He said he was unbudgeable. He just knew something, and he, he, and he wouldn't deviate from it. He knew it was right, and later it was proven right. Sometimes years later, the experiments would prove that what he said was right. He knew it all along because he trusted his intuition. See? So you have to learn to trust your intuition and live from it. See? In all matters, great and small, intuition first. First and last. And always, intuition. Okay? So you now see that you're lost in your imagination and that somehow separates you from your intuition. You're lost in thinking, scheming, planning, setting goals, and then worrying about what you're going to do and reliving the past. Why did she say this and why did she say that? So what's the answer? Not struggling with it. Struggling with it only involves you with it more and pulls you down into it more. No, just stand back and just watch it. Stand back. Separate from the thought. See, you're not the thought. If you pick, imagine a, a pink elephant and then you stare at that image, it, dis, it dissolves. It's only a thought. When you're asleep at night and you're having a nightmare and you're screaming, something awful is happening in your dreams and you wake up and it dissolves. And you see that it was only a nightmare, not reality. See, you can be separate from your thinking. You're not your thinking. You're not your body. You are your soul. Thinking, th see, thinking should be an extension of, of light. An extension of the light coming from God through the soul. See, then it becomes, becomes thinking, good thinking. You realize things and see things and ponder life. And it's just beautiful. But now your thinking comes from some other source. And it traps you and your emotions. So now you can see you're lost, too much lost in thinking and too much lost in your emotions. You're getting upset all the time. Getting angry, getting irritated, getting nervous, being irritable, being anxious, being impatient. Lost in your emotions. So you have to see that you have to get out of those. And if you can see that you need to be as close to your intuition as possible, and you haven't been... And if you can see that that's the way humans are supposed to, to be, and you can see that you're too lost in your imagination and your thought processes and your emotions, then you have to see that, that, that if there was a, a way that you could get out of those thought processes and those emotions and stand back from them and observe them in God's light, that would be good. Well, that's what the meditation is for. It's that simple. It's just so simple. It's the simplest thing. So that's what you need to learn to practice. And, you, and then you will begin to see and discover and realize. And old habits, bad habits will just let you go. You won't have to struggle with them. They just, you wake up one day and when you used to have to eat 50 pieces of chocolate, now you, all of a sudden one day, you just, you just don't. You used to have to have three donuts in the morning, now all of a sudden you just don't. If you're, something used to irritate you, no, you see, you're not irritated at all. You just look at it. And when people used to hate them, 
Now you just look at them and marvel, sometimes puzzled by their behavior, but without hating them. And then you, and you discover your own errors. So you, you discover that there's still some hate in you, some anger in you, some resentment in you. See, these remnants of the past, you discover them, you see them, you watch them, and you stand in quiet disagreement. You stand in quiet disagreement and watch them. And they dissolve away because you're not giving them energy. See, when you struggle with them or you indulge them, either way you're giving them energy. You're giving them life. You're giving them some of your temporal life that you have. You don't want to do that. You don't want to give these angers, these hatreds, these resentments, these fantasies that want to carry you away from reality. How many times have you wanted to do something? I'll give you an example. You, your child is playing a piece on the piano. Okay, nice piece. Or playing something on the guitar or on their flute or I'm just making something up. And so you're sitting there and you want to listen to, to them. But you know what you do instead? You go floating away thinking about what, what happened at work or what you're going to do tomorrow. Floating away. And the time goes by and all of a sudden you notice they're finishing up the song. Ten minutes went by. Fifteen minutes. Half an hour. It's just gone. You were lost. You weren't aware. Yeah, you were conscious, but you weren't aware. You were, you were lost. You have to learn to have a presence. You've heard of the expression presence of mind. Well, when you begin to meditate, get closer to the light, you'll have presence of mind. So, I hope you enjoyed this little video that I made. It's a little longer than I intended, but I did have some good things to say. I have to keep saying the same thing over and over again with the hope that somebody who's watching or listening will get it. My name is Roland.